Thank you, everybody, for joining me, no matter where you might be watching this on this occasion. The issue which I'm going to discuss today is one which has been of considerable concern to me, either uh, privately or through our Child Protection Party, for many, many years. And that is the Department of Child Protection's inappropriate uh, caring for and protecting the children in our community. Now, why they're called child protection, um, I will never know because clearly the protection of our children in many instances just does not occur. That perhaps we should change it to perhaps uh, the child non-protection uh, department. Perhaps we should think about language which better describes an organisation which fails time and time again to take responsibility for the way that they're treating and behaving around children and particularly the most vulnerable and with particularly the most vulnerable families in our community and it's about time we made a stand that we took these issues up and we protested in whichever way we feel is appropriate in order to bring about change one of the issues that i've had for a long time since kathy taylor has been in charge of the child uh, protection um, system uh, and that uh, is that <coughs> we um, we need to find a way to at least hold her to account for the failures which occur over and over again within the Department of Child Protection. Um, and there are so many of them. You know, if you were a chief executive for a corporation and you had the same number of mistakes made that she makes and you keep saying, well, <coughs> we understand the problem, we hear what people are saying, we're listening to people, but we can't solve the problem um, and that we're working hard to do it and we have the best people and all that sort of crap goes on and yet nothing changes, everything stays the same. In fact, one could argue has deteriorated under her watch one wonders why she is still there. And she needs to, and someone needs to make a decision about why you would have someone who continually continues to fail managing a system which cares for the most vulnerable, most vulnerable group of people in our community, that is, some of the families and their children. And why do we have the number of deaths that we have in relation to kids that the department knew about but chose not to act about and I'll just act on and I'll just talk about that in just a moment and why is it that we have a system which continually takes away children from <coughs> their parents and in many cases in an unnecessary situations where the parents and families could have worked with the department in order to rectify whatever were the issues that concerned the department. It, it amazes me that we continually allow a system to function that is as dysfunctional, if not more dysfunctional, than the very families in which it disrupts and whose lives it disrupts and the trauma that we cause children that are removed um, and that we have, uh, seem to be embedded in this notion for some reason that the child protection system <coughs> and the, the state in particular is a far better parent than what a lot of the families are. The evidence indicates that on many occasions they are not. I know it's not the case right across the board, but <coughs> the evidence is becoming more and more increasing that the department is understaffed, they lack the skills that they need to have in order to improve the well-being of kids. Um, <coughs> they are lazy, lackadaisical. Um, they had take a I don't care attitude. Um, in, in short, they're pathetic. And we need to be able to hold them to account for their degree of patheticness. And so I'm going to talk about, uh, in this particular video, 
uh, a newspaper article that came out. Uh, and I do thank Laren, this is Laren Novak, uh, Mitch Mott and Brad Crouch for their reporting on this um, because it's, it's important for us to continually be aware of information that you and I would not normally know about unless it wasn't for some people like some of these journalists who are out there um, informing us about issues that should matter to all of us. And uh, so here we've got a headline which simply says, four more dead babies revealed in Department of Child Protection report. But the Premier was unaware. So we've got another, another mistake, another error, where the Department has failed to inform the Premier of, of actually what was happening. And it, it reminds me of a Rachel Sanderson case uh, a couple of years ago now where a child that was in their care was raped. She became pregnant. She was only 14. And the minister didn't know about that. So there has to be s something, that I think, that, that happens within the system that prevents transparency, that there's something about the system that says that people are afraid to report what's happening. So in this particular in this particular report, Peter Malinowskis was unaware of the deaths of four babies known to the Child Protection Department, which are only revealed in a report kept secret for four years. So he's been in Parliament since March this year, and the report had been kept in secret prior to that. So the Marshall government, uh, the previous Liberal government, uh, had kept this report uh, hidden so that no one could get access to it. So for some reason, these reporters, to their credit, have been able to do so. Malinowska says he's unaware of the deaths of four babies known to the Child Protection Department, described details of their short lives as heartbreak on top of heartbreak. Well, I've got a flash for you, Peter. There are these continual heartbreaks upon heartbreaks. And it's time that we stopped giving lip service to actually what is happening in the community. Too many kids are being removed. An out, out of proportion number of Indigenous kids are being removed. Youth, youth suicide rates are extremely high. Uh, suicide rates within the child protection system, I think, are also high. I haven't got any data to prove that, but that's my sense. Uh, mental wellbeing issues are extremely high. And unfortunately, for a lot of kids that are in care, the outcome's are pretty crappy. So you're in charge of a system which for decades, maybe a century or so, has failed. And it continues to fail. And it takes extreme courage to be able to arrest that system and make the changes that are required in order that kids and families can feel safe. Um, it goes on to say, uh, the deaths only became public when an internal department report was provided to the coroner's court as part of an inquest into the death of an 11-week-old boy. I reported on that a week or so ago. He died on November 2018 while living in squalid conditions with his teen mother and young siblings. The tragic lives and deaths of the four other babies were recorded in the Adverse Events Review Report done in August 2018. And clearly, that report was not made public. <coughs> we have to wonder why. What are you hiding if you choose not to make these vital reports about the way your system, the system, the government system, even though it was another government at the time. But nevertheless, <coughs> um, you know, this, this, it's almost endemic, the need to be able to hide adverse reports. And, uh, and we need to make, hold these people to account so this particular behaviour stops. It makes clear that concerns raised about their welfare while their mothers were pregnant were not prioritised because the department was so stretched focusing on children who were already born. So we weren't interested in families that were at risk uh, <coughs> and whereby um, a child may be born um, with meth in their system or um, you know, an alcohol syndrome or some other issues or in a DV, in a family where there's DV. Um, you know, we <coughs> we're not going to be concerned about those kids because there are too many others. They all are important, every one of them, yet the government seems to believe 
but that doesn't really matter to them. The baby's case evolved and soon including, oh, here we go, mental health, domestic and family violence, substance misuse and criminal history. He George is heartbreaking on top of heartbreak. He said, I don't know whether, I can't believe that people, you know, there must be other language they could use. I'm distressed and this is how we're fixing it, right? And, and rather than feeling sad about the kids that have died, as sad as that is, to get angry at the system that continues to allow this to happen. To say that it is frustrating is probably a bit of an understatement. Well, tell us what you actually do mean, Mr Malinowski, because all of what we're learning about is newsworthy and news to me. <coughs> I can assure you that they would wish that it wasn't newsworthy because it makes them look bad. But nevertheless, it's out there now. Most of these incidents that we're now learning about go back to a period some time ago, but nonetheless, this is something that I am examining on a frequent basis. I'm sure you are. Don't know if you freaking care. Asked if he had confidence in the department's chief executive, Kathy Taylor. None of us do. Get rid of her. Enough said. He said, "Very, we very much see that there is a need for improvement. So, um, so he doesn't answer the question, does he have confidence? I don't know. I don't know what this woman holds over members of parliament, <laughs> but I do worry about it. Um, we very much see that there is a need for improvement in the Department of Child Protection. Cathy Taylor is aware of my expectations. That's something that I monitor very closely. Get rid of her. That is the answer for part of the problem. Put somebody in who understands the system, who has a vision as to how it can be repaired. Don't leave somebody in there who has failed incessantly year after year. Um, the Department Review revealed exclusively by the advertiser found it was uncommon that reports made about the welfare of pregnant women and their babies known as unborn children, co child concerns, were not allocated to a worker. <coughs> reports about those babies after they were born were also often closed without the department taking action. The information revealed indicated that in most cases, pre-birth assessment and planning was not undertaken by the, the department because cases, intakes related to born children were prioritised to ensure the safety and well-being of those children. Now, I don't know what they're referring to as born children. All children uh, are born. So um, are they referring to children that are just a few months old or whatever? And, you know, what makes a child more vulnerable at the point of birth, surely? And the fact that they're being born into families and into environments that are damaging to them. that They're the most vulnerable when they're babies, for Christ's sake. You know, don't you, don't you understand that simple logic? The other thing that we need to recognise also is that in this report it also mentions that a number of these kids themselves, but none of these parents who are kids, some of them when they gave birth to these kids, um, are, were also children who were in state care. And uh, so we need to be asking ourselves what a... <coughs> well, we need to be asking ourselves all the time, what are kids that are in state care... Uh, experiencing that either cause them to <coughs> use drugs, alcohol, uh, have mental well-being issues and to have inappropriate relationships, even though I'm quite sure some of these kids were probably enticed by older men. I guess, I guess the point is that <coughs> when cases are known to the department and the department fails to investigate, that is a serious problem and there's no excuse for it. It is clear <coughs> that the training and the uh, work that's required by staff members to appropriately assess cases just does not take place. And we need to ensure that their feet are held to the fire so that we don't wind up with reports like this that indicate that so many children have died as a result of not properly being investigated or the department saying they haven't got enough resources or they haven't got enough staff skilled enough to make appropriate assessments. It's atrocious. And if we must remember that if that was our kid, if that was a family member <coughs> and action wasn't taken, uh, then we would be horrified, absolutely horrified, that the department knew about it and did nothing. And <coughs> who holds them responsible? Nobody. But you and I can, to some extent, 
by raising these concerns, watching videos like this, sharing them, subscribing to this video is one way. Um, whether you're watching this on the Child Protection Party page or on my page, doesn't matter where you're watching it. Subscribe to this page, share it, let pe other people know what's going on. And if you're watching it on the CPP page or not, you know, join Child Protection Party. But <coughs> you can make a difference by creating a voice for many of these kids who, unfortunately, were not able to make it. Thank you.